Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Tudor history. The Tudors is a family that has ruled England, Ireland, and Wales. Also, an, an extended branch of the family tree, the Margaret Tudor line or branch, has ruled Scotland. Before we go on to learning the Tudor history, let's take a look at let's take a look at the family tree of the Tudors. I'm going to be showing you the extended parts of the family tree. Where my arrow is currently pointing now is pointing at Henry the Seventh. The woman who is right, where my arrow is pointing now, is Elizabeth of York. They have four kids, as you can see. Where my arrow is pointing now, Arthur, Prince of Wales. Where my arrow is pointing now, Margaret, Queen of Scotland. And where my arrow is pointing now, Henry VII. And where my arrow is pointing now, Mary Tudor, Queen of France. Arthur, Prince of Wales, never had descendants. But Margaret Tudor, Queen of Scotland, does have descendants. Let's take a look. There are two men right by her side. The first one is where my arrow is pointing now to her left, is James IV. Then to my right, Archibald Douglas. To James IV and the man below James IV and Margaret Tudor is James V. There are two women in the sides of James V as those two are his identical wives. While Archibald Douglas and Margaret Tudor have one son daughter together, Margaret Douglas. Now, I did not show Margaret Douglas's husband, but she does have a husband named Matthew Stewart. James V's two wives, the first wife in his right, on his right, Madeline of Valois, and then the second wife to his left, Mary of Guise. Well, Mary of Guise and James V have one daughter together, Mary Queen of Scots. While Margaret Douglas and Matthew Stewart, who is not seen in the family tree, have two sons together, Lord Henry Lord Darnley, or Henry Stewart Lord Darnley, and Charles Stewart. Henry Stewart Lord Darnley married his first cousin, first half cousin, Mary Queen of Scots. And they have one son together, James the Sixth, and first of Scotland, England, Ireland, and Wales. While Charles Stuart has one daughter, Arabella Stuart. Going up to King Henry the Eighth, where my arrow is currently pointing now. Henry the Eighth has married six times and has fifteen mistresses. So I'm only showing one mistress and three of his wives, as they were the only ones to have kids with Henry VIII. First wife is Catherine of Aragon. Catherine of Aragon and Henry VIII have one daughter, Mary. Where my arrow is currently pointing now is Mary. Mary has married her first cousin, two times removed Philip the second of Spain Philip the second of Spain is the son of the nephew of Catherine of Aragon now as you can see here the first woman to Henry the eighth's left is Elizabeth Blount or Bessie Blount. 
Elizabeth slash Betsy Blount and Henry Tudor, Henry Tudor or Henry VIII, have one son together. Henry Fitzroy, Duke of Richmond and Somerset. Henry Fitzroy has married Mary Howard, Duchess of Richmond and Somerset. While, while Henry VIII is also married to Anne Boleyn, Marchioness of... <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. But Anne Boleyn, Queen and Marchioness of something <laughs> that I forgot. They have one daughter together, Elizabeth I. And finally, Jane Seymour has married Henry VIII and have one son together, Edward VI. Now let's go on to Mary Tudor Queen of France's line. Mary Tudor Queen of France's line has married twice. Firstly to Charles Brandon, the man in Mary Tudor Queen of France's left. Then, well, not really firstly. She firstly married Louis XII de France. But then secondly married Charles Brandon. Charles Brandon and Mary Tudor Queen of France have two daughters. Frances Brandon, Duchess of Suffolk, and Elizabeth Brandon. Frances Brandon, Duchess of Suffolk, has married Henry Grey and have three kids together. Lady Jane Grey. The woman to Lady Jane's Grey right is Lady Catherine Grey, then Lady Mary Grey. Then finally, El Elizabeth Brandon has one daughter, Margaret Clifford, Countess of Derby. Please note that Margaret Clifford and Catherine Grey, the two first cousins, still have descendants who live to today. Now that we're done with the Tudor family tree, Let's get into the upper parts of the Tudor family tree. Here is the upper part of the Tudor family tree. You can see first, this is Henry VII. And this is Elizabeth of York. Henry VII and his biological parents are Edmund Tudor and Margaret Beaufort. Margaret Beaufort has married twice. Firstly, to Henry Stafford. Secondly, to William Stanley. So first one, Edmund Tudor. Second, Henry Stafford. And third, William Stanley. Since Henry VII's birth. Margaret also has married once before, but is but the marriage was not consummated and annulled. Edmund Tudor has a brother, Jasper, Jasper Tudor. They're maternal half-cousins of Henry VI, King of England. Now it's Elizabeth of York's turn. Elizabeth of York and her bio biological parents are Elizabeth Woodville, mother, and Edward IV, father. Elizabeth of York also, have, also has two brothers, only seen in one portrait. They're, no, they're known as the brothers in the tower, or the princess in the tower. The po my arrow is currently pointing at the portrait. The portrait's left holds Richard of York, and the portrait's right holds Edward, the F Edward V. If you can see where my arrow is pointing now, it's Edward IV. He has two men beside him. Those two man men are his brothers. 
All of the brothers, or the New York brothers, have rivaled each other. The first man to his right is Richard III. And then the second man to his right is George Plantagenet, Duke of Clarence. George Plantagenet, Duke of Clarence, has four kids. Anne, Richard, Edward Plantagenet, Duke... No, Edward, Edward Plantagenet. Earl of Warwick, and finally, Margaret Pole. The reason why Margaret Pole is seen with two pictures, one picture is a portrait, and the other one seems like from a show, is because her portrait can also be mistaken as Elizabeth, Countess of Wilshire, the mother of Anne Boleyn. That's why I showed her persona in the movie the white princess so that it won't be mistaken of this portrait as elizabeth countess of wilshire now let's talk about tudor history <sighs> nearly 600 years ago england was torn apart of a series of bloody battles for the throne in just 30 years, the crown has switched seven times. Tens of thousands, thousands were killed. It is one of the most violent times of Britain, Britain's history. The battle was named the Wars of the Roses. In the Battle of Bosworth, it all ends when Henry Tudor defeats King Richard III. But how did Henry become king when almost being a royal nobody? Well, it was all in one's hands. No, not a baron or duke, or not the prince, but Margaret Beaufort. Margaret Beaufort was the mother of Henry VII, or Henry Tudor. It was two years into the Wars of the Roses. In Pembroke Castle, Wales, there was a 13-year-old woman who was in labor. Her name was Margaret Beaufort. Even in medieval standards, Margaret Beaufort was extremely young to be pregnant. In my mind, she was too young to be pregnant, that she will never ever bear a child again, which she actually never ever bore, bear the child again actually. All her hopes into her baby, this girl and her, and her son will change England forever. It is very hard for Margaret Beaufort and her son for survival. If being a 13-year-old mother wasn't enough, she was also a widow. Her baby's father, Henry VII, her ba no, her baby's father, who was Edmund Tudor, had died three months before the birth of Hen Henry Tudor, or Henry VII. Without the husband, Margaret was almost helpless. Her only protector was Jasper Tudor, Edmund Tudor's brother. Jasper cannot help Margaret much, though. Luckily, Jasper and Edmund Tudor were, were half-brothers to Henry VI, the king. Unfortunately, the wrong half. The reason why it was the wrong half, because the king and the Tudor brothers were half-siblings through the mother, which made them maternal half-siblings, not through the king's father. But luckily... Henry Tudor is related to the king through his mother. As you can see here, this is the House of Lancaster family tree. Where my arrow is currently pointing now is John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster. He has married twice, 
refers to Blanche of Lancaster. They had two kids together, one we only care about, King Henry IV. King Henry IV had four kids, one we only care about, Henry V. Henry V, who married Catherine of France, had Henry VI. But Catherine of France also married Owen Tudor after the death of Henry V. They had two kids together, Jasper Tudor and Edmund Tudor. Edmund Tudor is the father of Henry the Sixth, Henry the Seventh. So, so through this line of the House of Lancaster, we can Henry the Seventh can trace his descent, but he can also trace his descent through the second line of the House of Lancaster. You see, John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster's second marriage to Catherine Swinford had three kids, one we only care about, John Beaufort. Jen Bo John Beaufort had three kids, one we only care about, John Beaufort, Duke of Somerset. John Beaufort, Duke of so Somerset, had Margaret Beaufort, the mother of Henry VII. Not to be mistaken by this Margaret Beaufort. But this Margaret Beaufort, a different Margaret Beaufort, let's call her Margaret Beaufort too, was the mother of Henry Stafford. Quite a coincidence that two Margaret Beauforts were the mothers of two Henrys. Henry Stafford became the second the second husband of Margaret Beaufort. If you have looked into the picture thoroughly, you would have seen that Henry Tudor and the king are distantly related to, through the mother. Through a right half, through a king. The only problem here is that the claim was through a woman and then a king. Or let's say, a woman, and then a man, and then a man, and then the king. The fact that it was firstly through a woman made the claim to the throne weak. As long as Henry's half-uncle was on the throne, Margaret, Henry, and Jasper were quite safe. But Henry's half-uncle was a useless king. It was too easy for his throne to go by because his own people t could go against him. So Margaret will have to find another husband just in case. But there's a heavy price with it. By medieval law, he would have to let his son, she would have to let her son go away and get raised with his nearest re male relative. Now, Margaret being only 13, have been married twice before, John Delapole then Edmund Tudor, is now looking for a new husband. But little did they know she has got she has got a perfect match in mind. On January 1548-1458, she marries her cousin, Henry Stafford. They look like a very unlikely couple. Henry is in his 30s and Margaret barely a teen. But Margaret has chosen a great match. You see, Henry Stafford has lots of power, but as a second son, has no money. Margaret, being the heir to the Beaufort possession, has lots of money, but no power. They have got the perfect ingredients for medieval survival. Margaret has a perfect life. She has a comfortable life, her son is safe, and Henry VI 
is still on the throne. But just in three years, her life goes upside down. Now, I should have told you. But during the Wars of the Roses, there were obviously two, two sides. The Lancasters and the Yorkshire. Hmm? Wait. There was a text here. Anyway, I know what to say here. Henry VI and his troops of fighting the Yorkshire have failed, and the Yorkshire have won. Henry VI is getting arrested in the Tower of London. Margaret's family is on the losing side. Henry Stafford was fighting with Henry VI. Henry Stafford is lucky to escape with his life. And things just get worse for Margaret. Edward IV's army were marching to Pembroke Castle. Pembroke Castle is where Jasper Tudor and Margaret's son live. Jasper successfully escaped, but Henry Tudor refused to escape. Henry was captured. Luckily, as a noble child, he was taken care of. Henry Stafford swears loyalty to Edward IV, but yet Edward IV strips Henry, Henry Tudor of all of his lands. But what does it mean, getting stripped of all of your lands? Well, you see, lands in your name can protect you, have troops to protect you from against anyone, even a king. But since Henry Stafford and Margaret Beaufort swore loyalty to Edward IV, all lands of Henry Tudor were returned. Now, Margaret is in th with the good side of Edward IV. As Edward IV, Margaret Beaufort and Henry Stafford were going on a hunting party, Something shocking happened. The Earl of Warwick has recently let Henry VI free from the Tower of London. Now Henry, the, now Henry VI is on the throne again. Now Margaret will have to to be in good sides with Henry VI, which will be a risky play because she was just with good sides of Edward IV. I'm going to be making a part two soon. Have a good day and stay healthy. See you!